welcome to this uh, lecture. This lecture is uh, the third in the series that we cover optics and this particular lecture is going to be on binoculars. Uh, one of the first things that uh, you want to know about a good set of binoculars uh, is probably the first set of optics you need. You, you probably want to get a, a set of binoculars before you get a, a spotting scope. And you want to learn how to use them. Uh, they're very important. And in fact, in many cases, I think that anybody who's had a pair and has used them uh, extensively, you'll find that they become indispensable. Uh, to the point that it will be one of the most important pieces of equipment you take into the field. Even in, in the realm of survival or, or something like that, or being lost, uh, you can use all sorts of examples where perhaps you've gotten disorientated, and, but if you have a set of binoculars, your car might be sitting right out in plain sight, uh, but with the naked eye you're unable to uh, discern that. Uh, but with a set of binoculars, you could have or found a road or a signpost or a trail or even a rock or something that you remember earlier in the day. Uh, so an optics, uh, a set of binoculars really becomes a fairly important tool to anybody uh, using them. Now, there's a lot of different ways that you'll start to walk and view uh, the natural world once you start uh, using binoculars. Uh, you'll find it hard to go right over the crest of a hill, for instance, uh, just nonchalantly. Whereas in the past, you'd walk over a hill, you'd seen nothing, heard nothing, and really expected nothing. Uh, but after using binoculars correctly, your expectation will change. Uh, and one of the techniques that I, I teach people is to take a set of binoculars, and this is just handheld, and as you walk up to a hill, as you walk to the crest, and just as you're able to start looking over the top, you want to take them up, take a look through, sweep the top of that other hill over, you take another step, and then you sweep again, step glass, step glass, step glass, as I tell uh, some of my pe the people who listen to me, you know. And uh, what you'll find is that after a while, that coyote that would have just crouched and just waited for you to go by, you actually see him. Uh, and, uh, you'll come across a bend in a wash and you'll do the same process and your awareness of course is now extended so far out that you begin to see animals and things uh, that you would have never seen before. Now another important uh, tool as far as binoculars are concerned and is generally not used, but still very important. And that is to use a set of binoculars that are on a tripod. Now, it seems sometimes a little bit much, an instrument like this, this is an 80 uh, millimeter objective, 20 power uh, binocular, and it's just a wonderful instrument. And it has one of the attributes, of course, that all binoculars have, and that is that they're easier to see through than the spotting scope. The spotting scope is always uh, more difficult uh, to see through. Uh, it usually has a, a smaller uh, image. It has uh, less eye relief. You've got to close one eye. Uh, they generally, because most of them now are zoom and most binoculars are fixed power, uh, the binocular has a much wider field of view, and that's why I tell people 
in lectures like this that uh, this is to look for something because it's got a wider field of view and you can see more of the terrain quicker uh, than a spotting scope's small field of view, uh, which is better suited for studying a small piece of ground or, or an animal that's already been found. And many times I do that. I'll use a binocular, find an animal, and then set up the spotting scope to actually view it and enjoy it in a close-up, uh, more detailed manner. And so the binocular, because it is more comfortable uh, to look through, you tend to be willing to use it more. Uh, and that's one of the things, one of the attributes that I find very desirable in a pair of binoculars is just how comfortable are they to look through. Uh, and it's one of the things that when you're buying a binocular you want to look, look at as far as, as well as brightness and field of view and so forth. Now, getting back to using it on a tripod, one of the things I have found over the years that even a 8 power or certainly a 10 power uh, binocular is worthy of a tripod. Um, a good quality 8 power tri uh, a binocular on a tripod is an awesome instrument. A 10 power binocular you'll find for many people uh, is getting to a power level where you're starting to shake more. Uh, the, the perception because of the magnification and you're further out and it's moving and that movement is a racing detail. Uh, just like the an example of that would be if a car went by at one mile an hour and I was asked to describe, you know, the driver, I could tell you, well, he was wearing a baseball cap and a certain baseball team logo and he was smoking a cigarette and this and that and the other thing. Whereas if that same car were to go by at 100 miles an hour, I could probably tell you very little about the driver in a description. Well, the same happens essentially when you're jiggling, when you're vibrating. You lose that essential detail. And sometimes that detail is essential. Uh, so a tripod tends to get rid of that. Uh, well, it does get rid of it unless you're in a howling wind or something. But it makes it a much easier instrument to look through as well. When you get a, a tripod set up, you always want to set it up where it's comfortable to look through, where you're not bending your neck down or anything like that. And because it's not uh, vibrating, of course you want to you know, adjust it. And typically you have a, a, the, all the different adjustments, uh, the diopter as they call it, uh, adjusted right. Because your eyes, nobody's eyes are really the exact magnification. And you have an adjustment here. And this, this adjustment takes care of that. And it'll make it much easier to look through uh, by getting that adjusted right. And once you have a, a binocular all set up for you and you put it on a tripod, you've really doubled or tripled its ability uh, to give you the information and the knowledge that, that the whole idea of the optics is for. Um, uh, one of the uh, methods I used to explain that is if you only have uh, $10 of attention to pay at some far off uh, animal, a bighorn sheep or something, uh, or to look for such an animal, by holding a, a pair of binoculars uh, by hand, you, it takes a certain amount uh, of, of mental capacity just to hold them. And I realize that gets into the walking and chewing bubblegum at the same time kind of uh, conundrum, but it, it is real. And then you got to hold them at the right place in your eyes, and then if you're standing up, you're actually having to control your body, uh, and all that is taking, you're paying attention, if you will, and if you only have $10 of attention to pay, you may be paying 5 or $6 uh, to just stand in there holding the binoculars. 
and not at what you're looking for or looking at. Um, and again, that cuts into that, that mentality of how many days in the field do you have. Well, if you're spending two days in the field, but you're paying half of your attention with your binoculars to just holding them, and you're losing another half of it because you're shaking and whatnot, you're only getting half of what that binocular really can deliver. Uh, so that when you put it on a tripod, you get that back. Pretty soon, it's as if you have 10 or 20 power eyesight because you don't really have to think about holding it. You're not shaking. So your mind is really on the subject matter. And again, it's one of those things that make that accumulative difference, that feedback loop, if you will. And that feedback loop is going to be much stronger, the feedback loop of information, with a tripod. It makes such a difference that um, I don't know why it's not more popular. Um, but it is one of the things you can do to increase your knowledge. And of course, as you increase your knowledge, then you know how to get more knowledge and so forth. And that's your loop there. And with the, the good modern pair of binoculars, it is a tremendous mechanism for having the experience of the wilderness and collecting knowledge. And with that, I thank you and hope that you will appreciate a good set of binoculars a little bit more in the field. And I thank you very much.